Hey traders, if you trade futures and equities, also known as stonks at Schwab, and you can't read your monthly statement, this is the video for you. So let's start with the monthly future statement. This is page four of the monthly future statement. I have no idea why they put all of the most important information on page four, but that's how it is at Schwab. Anyway, these are the three uh, values that I find most important. This is your beginning balance for your futures account, your ending balance for your futures account, and then your net uh, futures profit or loss after fees and stuff. So you can see commission and fees down here. This is, with all of that included, this is how much I made. I made, you know, I, I lost money this month. Um, let's go to the brokerage statement. Now, one, one thing you want to point out is that Schwab treats these as completely separate accounts. And that's one of my big beefs with this is that when it says your account value, that's not your total account value because you, you have to add the numbers from the futures to get your actual account value. Um, another big beef I have is here where it says the deposits and withdrawals. Those aren't real deposits and withdrawals that I did. Th that has future sweeps built into it. So you know, I'm trading futures and equities, and I kind of think I'm in one account. Silly me. But they have two different accounts, futures and equities. And if I buy more futures contracts, they withdraw money out of my brokerage and add it to the futures uh, account. And, you know, if I make money in futures or I close some of my open futures positions, they'll deposit money back into this account. So this is falsely inflated. These are not deposits that I made from my bank or anything like, like some of them are because I did deposit money this month but they're not all that so it's it's kind of just aggregated together with the futures junk that I really don't care about um, and so it's very unhelpful from my standpoint as an end user but the helpful values on here there are four of them the beginning and ending value of just this equities account so they call it a brokerage account but I, you know, I view this as the equity side and then this is the future side. So the equity account starts with this much in it and ends with this much. And this is how much I made in dividends and interest. And then this is my other profit from equities. So I call this, uh, you know, my equities profit. And then there's also dividends and interest. You could consider dividends and interest part of your equities profit, but, um, what I did is I write, wrote code to kind of parse through all this stuff. So let me open this up. So essentially I took those seven values that I just showed you from the two different statements and I put them in a CSV. So let's get a nicely formatted version of this. So I have the year and the month and then the beginning and ending futures values, uh, balances the beginning and ending equities balances, the profit from futures and equities, and then that dividends and interest number. And those are all the boxes that I just showed you. And what I do is I have a computer program go through and calculate the stuff that you actually want to see. So what kind of stuff do I want to see? I want to see the total ending balance of everything in my account. So, you know, this, what we're just looking at is the July statement. There's nowhere on there that to tells me that total, my account is worth like 82,500. I have to add those numbers myself because I would have to take the ending value of, of this, 70,500 or whatever, and add it to the ending, ending balance of this to get my 82,500. I don't wanna do that. I want Schwab to do that for me, but apparently they won't. Um, you know, here's the change in my balance, but that doesn't completely tell me everything because I didn't actually make $9,500 this month. I, I actually deposited $9,000 this month. So 9,000 of that is just deposits. I actually, my total return from, you know, my equities profit, my futures profit, and my dividends and interest was only $500. So um, nowhere, nowhere on any of this does it say, that I deposited 9,000 because it's teased in, uh, they've, they've got it mixed in with the futures uh, sweeps. So what you have to do for that part is, so you can see I have two input files into my program that kind of generates this performance summary. And it ends up generating, okay, what's my percent return for each month? Like 
you know, th this month I made 7%, this month I made 0.63% return, blah, blah, blah. And then I can calculate my compounded um, rate of re return to date. So, you know, over this four month period, I made an 8.8% return. It, 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 nothing in Schwab ever gives you that. Um, so anyway, uh, you can see that I have two input files here. The other input file, that the one is the seven values that I just showed you, so it's uh, these seven values, and then the other input file is this one. And where does this one come from? It has to come from a report that you have to run in Schwab. This is kind of ridiculous, people. It should be better than this, but basically you have to come to this history tab right here in your Schwab account. You gotta go to filter by transaction types and put electronic transfers in here. And these are all the electron, electronic transfers from my bank. And so I'll take this, number, uh, this date from it um, and then I'll take the amount here and basically plug that information in here. So here's the date, here's the amount, and I'll also put in this um, origin column that just tells me which bank account it came from just for my own purposes, but it's not actually used in the code because the code doesn't care. It just, the code needs to know where, how much money did I actually deposit into my account so I can kind of tease out what's my actual um, performance to date like after taking out these um, deposits and whatnot to find my total return. Now, granted, you can find your total return because the total return is just the addition of these three numbers and they do give you all those three numbers on on your balance sheet. But if you actually want to add up your total total ending balance each month and ascertain what your change in balance was each month and where that came from, whether it was from direct deposits or you actually earning money, well, you got to do all, all of this to figure that out. And also, if you want to calculate your percent re return, you would, uh, uh, of, you know, both accounts combined, all of your trading, you would need to take your total balance and compare that to your total returns, but it doesn't give you your total returns or your total balance. Schwab makes you add these numbers yourself, which again is a bit ridiculous. Um, so I've got this, this code here. It is in this repo. It is a public repo. So if you go to this URL, I'll link it in the description, but you can go to this URL. You can down, download the code. Um, if you don't know how to use Git, I guess <laughs> figure out how to use Git first. Um, but then you can pull down this repo and then all the rest of the instructions are here. You can um, install all the packages. Uh, you know, I've put all the packages in this requirements.txt file so you can just easily install all of them. You make your virtual environment. If you're unfamiliar with Python, you might need to at least get familiar with it enough to install it and be able to run a Python um, program. But essentially you can you can do that and then you know down here I say okay af after you run it successfully um, then you're going to want to add your own data. So you're going to want to go to your statements, grab these four values from your brokerage statement, these three values from page four of your future statement, and then you're going to want to um, pop back in here and input all of those seven values row by row for one one row for each month into a csv this uh this is a nicer version of that and then you'll want to um run that report like i was showing you in schwab in the history tab you'll want to run that report and fill in all of the deposits that you've made or withdrawals so these would be negative numbers if they were withdrawals and then you can run this run.py file and it will calculate um, it will if I just delete these files oops if I just delete these files right here delete I can run this again let me Python run and it will print out some information that you know it'll tell you month by month like kind of some of the values that it's calculating, but it also recreates these three output files here. 
And if you get a nice CSV editor, you can view them in a nicer way. This is self-consistent column is because one, one of the nice things about this is I make sure all the math adds up because I calculate the change in the balance by using you know the beginning and ending balances of the futures and the equities accounts. So that's pretty straightforward. But I also calculate the change in the balance, the total change in balance here, in a completely independent way where I take, okay, well, what are all my profits? And then how much money did I deposit in the account? So if, for instance, you miss a row in here and you know you actually deposit deposited money but you didn't put it in this account then this total change in balance calculated from cash flows is going to be different from this total change in balance calculated from your balances and that will be flagged in um, the you know is self consistent uh, column of this so that is self consistent column will be false so, you know, I can give you an example of that right now. So if I just deleted this and saved it and then ran this again, it'll say at the end, some rows are not self-consistent. And if you want to know which rows, you go into the statement, um, let's see, statement detail output. And it's just asking me to reload it because it changed. And you can see that this last row is not self-consistent because this change in balance is not equal to this change in balance. You can see that it's $4,500 off. And the reason it's $4,500 off is because I left off that last deposit. Okay, so um, if anyone from Schwab is watching this video, don't put stuff on the most important numbers on page four of the future statement that should be on page one. This isn't hard, folks. And please add up the numbers for me. Like, why do I have to make my own Python program to add up the numbers for me each month? And I'm, I'm not trying to do anything too fancy here. I just want to know the return that I'm getting on my trades and my investments. And that that is something that almost every person that is investing in the market would be interested in. Like, how much What's my percent return for this year out of all of my stuff? Not separately, two separate accounts, because those are all of my investments in that account, and I, I just want them aggregated. Please aggregate it for me. Don't make me aggregate it. Thank you.